Motions and resolutions. <laughs> Hollins moves that House Bill number 447 be taken from the table. I recognize the maker of the motion, the majority whip, the member from Hennepin, Representative Hollins. Can't even understand. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Ramsey, actually, oh. but that is my motion. Representative Hollins moves that House File 477 be taken from the table. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, please say no. The motion prevails. The clerk will report the bill. House File number 447, an act relating to civil law, the first engrossment. I recognize the author of the bill, the member from Ramsey, Representative Becker Finn, to explain the bill. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this is the Judiciary Policy Omnibus Bill. Um, it is a very bipartisan bill. I'm going to talk not about every single uh, piece in this bill, but uh, there are a couple things I want to lift up that I think are important. Um, again, bipartisan work that we've been doing in the Judiciary Committee. Um, as you guys know, we're the, we're the data nerds uh, in uh, the Judiciary Committee, and so there are uh, a couple of elements related to that. Uh, first, there is a bill uh, that would make sure that uh, students' personal contact information is uh, private data. Right now, uh, in Minnesota statute, the default is that uh, kids names, home addresses, phone numbers, contact information is public data. We are uh, closing that loophole up so that uh, kids' private information is held safe. Um, there are also some changes around notary publics uh, so that more uh, a notary can perform marriages. We also have a Representative Scott bill, uh, a Representative Bliss bill. Um, fixing some uh, technical things from previous work that we've done. And last, uh, I want to lift up, there's a Representative Feist provision uh, that requires that personal injury cases can continue even if the uh, victim passes away, so the survivorship can continue. Um, it's, it's a relatively short bill. I do want to speak to, um, unfortunately, one of the provisions uh, in this bill has uh, gone off the rails a bit um, on social media, and so I want to set the record straight. Um, there's a provision in this bill that comes from the Take Pride Act, and it is updating our human rights statutes. Um, specifically, there's a piece in the bill uh, that, uh, so the bill updates outdated language that incorrectly ties pedophilia to a person's sexual orientation. Nothing in the bill changes or weakens any of the crimes against children in our criminal statute or the state's ability to prosecute those who break the law. Um, of course, pedophilia is not a protected class, is not a sexual orientation, which is why the language never should have been in the bill in the first place. And I think the confusion in the public right now really speaks to why it's problematic um, that this language was in the bill, uh, in, in our statute to begin with. So I just wanted to note that um, obviously um, none of us want to uh, protect people who are trying to harm children. I, uh, If at any point... Um, Anyone in committee, when we heard this bill, when we heard the omnibus bill, had asked that we update this language um, to make folks more comfortable, I, I would have been happy to do that. I understand there is an amendment coming, and uh, we'll be happy to put that on the bill uh, to make it very clear what our intentions are. Uh, so that is the bill, and uh, again, understand there's a couple of amendments. <clears throat> there is an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. <clears throat> Niska moves to amend House Bill number 447, the first engrossment. The amendment is coded A-5. I recognize the author of the amendment, the member from Anuka, Representative Niska, to explain the A-5 amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. And Representative Becker Finn, I think this bill, when it came to the committee, was on one of those double stack committees where I was trying to run between uh, two committees. And so I, I, I appreciate the fact that it sounds like we will be able to um, uh, potentially fix what I think is uh, a, 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 an actual real potential problem with, um, with the bill as it, as it sits now. And uh, my two amendments today actually both uh, tie together a little bit. And they, they're about the ways in which um, we as legislators, when we uh, pass a law, when we write different laws in statute or delete laws in statute, uh, words in statute, 
I was talking to one of the members across the aisle, just having a, as we were walking actually back from the Capitol to the SOB one day, and, and, and we were talking about how it's kind of like throwing a, a rock into a pond, and you don't totally know exactly where all the ripple effects are going to be. And so I appreciate Representative Becker Finn for, for being very clear about what the, the, the intent of this um, is, and there's a reason why I didn't offer the amendment to just put the, to just undo the striking of the language. Um, this amendment, um, I, I takes that concern seriously about uh, of, that this language is clumsy and, and, and misplaced within the uh, sexual orientation definition and just in an, in a, as a separate section um, clarifies that so some court down the road doesn't buy somebody's argument down the road that um, what we were trying to do was something that today I hope we're going to say we're not trying to do, which is we are not trying to create some sort of uh, cause of action or protected class under the Minnesota Human Rights Act uh, for pedophilia. That the, the other, none of the other categories should be read to create a protected class um, in that way. And so to try to close that off for that future court case, I hope that we will all strongly uh, make that clear and put this amendment on. And so, Madam Speaker, I, I, I hope that we will all support the A5 amendment and so we can all vote green. I request a roll call. Representative Niska requests a roll call. Same 15 hands, there will be a roll call. Representative Becker Finn. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, and thank you, uh, Representative Niska. Uh, again, happy happy to do this. It was never the intention. Um, never has been a protected class, should never be a protected class. That's, that's clearly not the intention of anybody uh, in this body. And, and to what I spoke to in the underlying bill, if anything, this overall bill actually protects our kids. Um, and I think that we can, we can all agree on that. So I would appreciate uh, members supporting the amendment. Any further discussion? Seeing none, the clerk will take the roll on the amendment. The clerk will close the roll. There being 126 ayes and zero nays, the motion prevails, the amendment uh. is adopted. <clears throat> There's an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. <clears throat> Niska moves to amend House Law number 447. The first engrossment as amended. The amendment is coded A4. Representative Niska. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. And this is one of those data geek uh, kinds of amendments. Uh, we, we talk about uh, government data and the Data Practices Act a lot in the Judiciary Committee. Um, and I thought it was important that we, uh, that we all, and I, and I hand it out to everyone, because um, I thought this was very helpful to me to read uh, the Supreme Court opinion in Energy Policy Advocates versus Ellison, which is a, a, de a decision interpreting what we've written in the Data Practices Act about data for the Office of the Attorney General. And um, it was a 4-3 decision, and Justice Thiessen, who used to uh, sit up there in that chair, uh, wrote what I thought was really quite a, an extraordinary dissent in the case about why the majority of the court had gotten this interpretation of this provision incorrect. And so I did offer an, a, 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 a bill. Um, we didn't get it heard. I hope we will be able to get that heard uh, next year. Uh, chair Becker Finn, House File 2480. Um, and I think it's important, though, that we all think about a couple of things about uh, the, the energy policy advocates bill. First of all, I think it's very helpful for us to read, all of us to read, again, what those ripple effects can be when the courts are trying to interpret words we say and words we don't say, and when we don't say the same words we do say in other sections. Because that was really a big part of, I think, what, where the majority uh, really latched onto, and they said, it, they kicked it back over to us and said, hey, legislature, it's your job to try to fix this. I believe they went in, uh, in the wrong direction, too far towards uh, government secrecy and not respecting, I think, important uh, public interests in transparency. I don't think this should be a partisan um, issue. Uh, this is something I would support even if the, the attorney general were a Republican. But, I, I just wanted to raise this in order to, to, to raise this issue with the body and also to kind of 
help us to understand the point of the other amendment, which is we, we should be very, very careful and very precise about the words that we use and don't use. And um, so with that, I, I don't think it's necessary that we take a, you know, a vote or a partisan vote on this today. And so, Madam Speaker, I withdraw the A, uh, the A4 amendment. Representative Niska withdraws the A4 amendment. There are no further amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, House Hall number 447, as amended. Third reading, as amended. Discussion to the bill. <clears throat> the member from Anoka, Representative Niska. Sure. Th thank you, Madam Speaker and members. There are, uh, there are some good policy provisions in this bill, definitely um, some good uh, bipartisan provisions. Most of the provisions in Article 1 I agree with. Um, Representative Scott, I'm sure we'll talk about the technical fix on forfeiture. Um, we fixed, uh, 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 we, we took a Representative Bliss bill to fix veterans' predatory lending. We fixed the name change process. In Article 6, we, I think, did a, took an important step towards creating a new process for healthcare open uh, discussions. That was a, a bill that actually was incorporated that I was a co-author on. Um, but there are a couple of provisions uh, in particular that I, I, I can't support. Um, and I just want to talk very briefly about uh, one that I think is misguided, especially in our uh, current political moment, which is that the, the bill takes the Board of Public Defense um, from currently a board where the majority of the board is appointed by the judicial branch and now it's a board that uh, the majority of the board is appointed by the governor. And we heard in, 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 in committee testimony, uh, you know, one public defender that said, we need to make sure that justice is not seen as a partisan thing, it's not seen as a political thing. And I, um, I think this is a step in the wrong direction um, in, that, in that regard. And I think that, again, we should be thinking about um, how we structure our government processes, how we structure our government boards in a way that's neutral to which side wins or loses, whose ox is getting gored. And I think that um, the, the changing this provision in the, in the, public, uh, the Board of Public Defense is a mistake. I hope we can uh, change it in uh, conference committee and, and get that taken out so that, again, we put the Board of Public Defense, which is an independent office within the, the judicial branch, into something where we can trust the leadership as being chosen in a non-political way by the uh, judicial branch. And I, I appreciate that there is some politics in the judicial branch as well. The governor initially appoints judges and then they run as um, in elections, they're nonpartisan elections. But if we uh, lose the ability to trust the courts as a neutral, um, fair uh, body, then we're in a lot of trouble. And so I do think that it's important that we uh, have the Board of Public Defense as a board that is uh, where a majority of the board is chosen by the judicial branch. And for that reason, uh, I, I am a reluctant no vote on this bill today. I hope we can fix that in, in, in conference committee. Um, I appreciate the fact that we did fix what I thought was an important thing to fix in this bill as well. But uh, today I'm a no vote. Thank you. The member from Anoka, Representative Scott. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, thank you, Representative uh, Becker-Finn, um, for uh, a good committee. And I don't have anything new to add to what Representative Niska said. Um, the, the Board of Public Defense making it a political body is, is problematic, and I encourage our members to vote red. And yours, too. The member from Ramsey, Representative Becker-Finn. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, and uh, just to speak to, you know, the, the intent was to try to get more public, members of the public on that board. Um, that, that's really the goal with the Board of Public Defense. But again, overall, this is a, this is a good, mostly bipartisan bill that I think um, fixes some things a couple of us have been working on for a couple of years um, in uh, the nerdier space. I can say you, you withdrew the amendment um, before I could speak to it, uh, Representative Niska, um, but I appreciate that for once you referenced referenced a case and gave us um, copies of the case. I, um, I could make you raise your hands, but you and I may be the only people who have read it and will read it. Uh, but I, I can uh, promise you we'll be getting more uh, in the weeds and some data policy stuff uh, throughout the interim and, and next session in a non-budget year. Um, with that, members, uh, this is a good bill, um, fixes some things, and uh, we should all vote green. Thank you. The clerk will take the roll on the bill.
The clerk will close the roll. There being 70 ayes and 57 nays, the bill is passed as amended and its title agreed to.